there, it's Mrs. Drake with the clarinet, and we are going to be doing Book 2, Lesson 6. Book 2, Lesson 6. I hope you've already warmed up on your scales and all that. Okay, Lesson 6 has a new rhythm called a triplet. All right, so take a look at Song 1. Do you see how it's like a three-legged TT, but there's a three over the top of it? That means you got to cram three of them into one beat. Usually TT, two of them is one beat, but this one... When it has a three over the top, that means you have to cram three of them into one beat. And the nickname for it is triplet because it has three syllables. So on song one, it would go triplet ta, triplet ta, triplet ta. So that would be the speed of it. And it's called the triplet. And the nickname is triplet, so it can have three syllables. Okay, on song number one, um, there's no key signature. So notice that the first measure is A's, but please notice that the second measure is B, and you got to have left green for the B. The third measure is C, bright red, but then look at the fourth measure. It's a new note. It's C sharp. C sharp. All right, let me show you C sharp. So all six fingers. Up here... I have mine marked with blue tape. If you happen to have any blue tape at your house, that'd be great. Um, it's next to the green one. Okay, so it's the one right next to the green one. So look at my four pinky keys here. So you know where the green one is, the one that you use to play high B. It's the one next to it. This one is considered the C sharp key. All right, so try to notice where that is. So let's try, try this. We're going to start with a high D, three fingers up here, three fingers down here, no pinkies, and then I'm going to hit the blue one. See if you can get it to sound like this. Then you know you're hitting the right one. Try that, everybody. Try that. All right, so that note is C sharp. In song one, later toward the end, there's an F sharp also. So this is all getting more complicated. So, tripletta, tripletta, song number one. First time through, you might want to just watch the music and try to move your fingers, listen to me play it, because this one is a tricky finger, fingering challenging song. Song one, ready, go. <laughs> song. Okay, song two is the D major scale, and I think we've already probably already tried this. It's going to have the sound of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Notice the key signature, though. It has F sharp and C sharp, so you are going to need that blue one for the C on this one also. Okay, song two. Okay, everybody, song two. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> I just noticed something, and I'm sorry I didn't mention this before. On that one, I prefer the right blue. Okay, so C sharp can be played with your left pinky, or it can be played with your right pinky. You have your choice. Do you notice, I'm hitting the blue one up here, but do you notice how it's activating this one also? So you could play C sharp with your right pinky on this one. And in that D major scale, song number two, and I hope we've already discussed this, but I think it's a better choice to play it with the right blue instead of the left blue on song number two. All right. All righty. Um, all right, let's take a look at song number three. What's um, song number three? And song number three has F sharp and C sharp, but as she looks through song number three, there's no C's in this one anyways. But high F sharp, I want to remind you, is middle finger. <laughs> The first notes of song three are high F sharp. There is a bunch of slurs. There's a repeat sign. There's also a D, C, L, fine, which means you have to return to the beginning. Do you notice how the beginning is F, F, F with a slur marking over it? I don't feel like that's appropriate for elementary school. What that means is you're supposed to lightly flick your tongue on the Fs. Um, Technically, they're not ties, so I'm going to get rid of that first slur marking. I'm getting ready of that first slur marking. There's one later in the song where if you have the same notes under a slur marking, you're supposed to flick your tongue gently. It's the one like at measure 13 going into measure 14. Um, all right. 
But anyways, okay, so song number three starts with F sharp middle finger, including all the repeats. I'm going to do the slurs. If you feel like it's too challenging, maybe the first time through, leave off the slurs. Also look ahead, you see there's some high A's in this song. In the third measure, the first note of the third measure is high A. Challenging. Again, song three is pretty challenging. The first time through it, you might want to just listen to me play it and, and try to move your fingers along with me. Again, you can leave off the slurs. That makes it easier, too. Okay, everybody, song three. Ready, get set, go. challenging song a very challenging song all right everybody song four is a little Bach for band Bach is a German composer very famous German composer that lived a couple hundred years ago wrote a lot of beautiful music okay song four the first note is high A well challenging it has an F sharp and C sharp key signature uh, there are no C's in it but when a melody ends on D, often on um, the key of D, they'll have F sharp key signature, yeah, F sharp and C sharp key signature, even if there's no C's in it. Reminder, the F set to be played middle finger F sharp. A lot of slurs in this one also. First time through, again, you might want to just listen to me play it to get used to it. Okay, I'm going to warm up the beginning. That's going to be the speed. One two, ready, go. Challenging, but a beautiful piece of music. Okay, go on to the next page. I'm going to grab a drink of water. Hey, Little Brown Jug is going to be comfortably easy compared to those hard songs that we just played. Check the key signature of number five, B flat key signature. So if you need to write a reminder by the B's, it's going to be first finger B flat. They even wrote some of the words if you want to sing the song, I suppose. <laughs> okay, song five, warm up the beginning. <laughs> Ready, go. Notice it's a duet, so I recommend on duets to write A, B, A, B, A, B, so you can keep it organized which one you're playing. And then, of course, you got to decide, are you playing the A staffs or are you playing the B staffs? So I'm going to do both. I'm going to play the A staff, then I'm going to play the B staff. So decide, are you going to play with me or are you going to play the opposite one so you would be, we would be playing a duet together? Okay, on this song, notice it has the F sharp and the C sharp key signature. All right, so F sharps and C sharps. Remember the C sharp is the blue key. And I recommend on this one, I'm looking at measure five, six, seven, eight. Measure eight has a C sharp and then it goes to a B. So I recommend the right 
C sharp, the right C sharp. So the right blue, and I'm actually writing that on my music, right blue. And Okay, alrighty, so I'm gonna play the A staff. Decide if you wanna play the A staff with me or play the B staff. Remember to use the F sharp, C sharp key signatures. Of course, I'm gonna do the slurs, um, and I encourage you to get where you can get the slurs too. Okay, everybody, warm up the beginning of Let the Party Begin. This one's kind of challenging. Okay, let the party begin. I'll say, ready, set, go. I'm going to play the A staff. Ready, get set, go. song challenging song okay now I'm gonna play the B staff decide if you want to play with me or do you want to play the A okay B staff if you're playing B staff make sure the first note is F sharp ready get set go <laughs> has a recording that goes along with it. I already sent you the links. So if you feel like you have let the party begin pretty good, um, I encourage you to find that recording and play it along with it. Okay, that was lesson six.